Hello, uh, Jim Howard here. It's uh, May 8th, 2012. I'm recording this with Webcam Max and my, um, that's the software. And the camera is, of course, the Logitech Pro C920. Uh, the uh, Webcam Max software, you can't do HD video. Uh, with it, so you don't need to see me in, a, in HD video anyway. I wanted to comment about a number of things. One is this bomb threat that uh, was foiled apparently by the CIA and the CIA, and it seems like in these cases that usually happens, they got a tip from uh, Saudi Arabia or some other country or some security agency of a foreign country. We've been really lucky that there hasn't been, you know, an aircraft blown up or uh, something bad happens, and it's just a matter of time because, you know, they only have to be, they're plotting all the time to attack our aircraft or do something, and they only have to be successful one time, you know, and it'll be a tremendous tragedy. So uh, a lot of credit due to our CIA and Homeland Security people and everybody from, you know, the absolute bottom to the top. Everybody deserves credit for it, but we really need to, you know, we need to expect that something is going to happen. I hate to say that because I've got a daughter who travels flies all the time, and uh, it's not just between, you know, doesn't just fly between, she, you never know where she's going to be flying uh, all over. So I worry about that, but we need, um, a lot of people will not agree with me, we need a national identity card. I hate to say that. I've said it before because of the, you know, privacy issues, but we do need a, for the United States, we need a national identity card that is absolutely ironclad, foolproof, uh, highest technology, whatever it takes to make sure this thing, and if somebody does, we need laws in place, if somebody hacks it or somebody uh, creates false ones or something like that, we need to lock them up in prison forever and throw away the key. We really need, you know, with, <clears throat> with that identity card, and I, I, again, I'll say this, a lot of people are not going to agree with me. The identity card, with it, when you went to the airport, it could be used for other purposes. It would be used for other purposes. It's used for everything. But when you went to the airport with that card, you'd just swipe it and basically, you know, okay, go on. That's because they would know. You know, now sure, you wouldn't have to take your shoes off, you wouldn't have to have the scant, but sure, as you're heading down, you know, the aisle to go, you walk through a corridor or whatever, and then they could have passive detection systems, you know, sniffing for gunpowder, you know, but you just wouldn't even know it, you just walk, you're walking to your airplane through this uh, thing, but the identity card would stop that having to pat down little three-year-old girls and and uh, check on great-grandmas that are in wheelchairs and it would just you know but the identity card would have to have you know data coming into it that's how they would know you know but, and that would have to be data all kinds of data would have to be pulled in and there's people who just go fucking crazy when it has to do with you know they they want their privacy but then they go to Facebook and you know, like a CIA agent, a Secret Service agent has a Facebook account showing a picture of him leering at a uh, at uh, Sarah Palin. I mean, we put we put this crap on the internet, but yet, oh man, we want our privacy protected, and oh, we don't want the government to have red light cameras. Uh, we don't want to have cameras aimed down the street of some place where it's a high crime area. You know, invasion of uh, our privacy.
the identity card, I'm not sure exactly what kind of date. You know, I'm guessing if you had an identity card like that, if you wanted to purchase a handgun, gunpowder, dynamite, ammonia nitrate, which I guess is fertilizer, you know, the things that you'd have to use your identity card to, to make the purchase and that would go in the computer. Now, you know, there's nobody sitting there. Okay, let's see. Joe Blow in Pennsylvania just bought a Glock 40 caliber. There's nobody sitting there watching that, you know. It would just be, that data would go in there, and then when you went to the airport, if the settings, you know, were set up, it would be, wait a minute, this person just purchased a ton of ammonia nitrate uh, a month ago. Yeah, step over in this other waiting room, please. But I mean, everybody else would be going through the line. The other thing I wanted, well, let me comment maybe a little more on, on this. Because um, I worked hospital security for 30 years. I actually worked a little longer than that in other types of security. I worked part time, all the time I was working, not all the time, for 10 years or so that I worked hospital security full time. I worked part time contract security two days a week or whatever for extra money. And then I worked, uh, when I was in Florida, I worked for a year at a shopping mall security. And then I worked, um, well, I've just worked all kinds of places radio television, you know, radio television station, worked every, you know. Security measures, the other person, of course, I've never, I mean, I worked FAA control tower security also, but I've not worked, you know, I mean, I was a night watchman. It was more than a night watchman. I mean, I I call myself a night watchman or whatever, but, you know, we did, when we did hospital security, it was hospital security and safety and OSHA regulations, and I was a fire marshal at a hospital. We, I tested the standpipes and the fire alarm systems and conducted the fire drills. I mean, just, I mean, there's a, there a lot more, to, you know, to this. But, I mean, I haven't been involved in this homeland security, you know, for prevention of terrorist attacks or whatever. Although everybody has to be doing their job, even people who are not in law enforcement, you know, the passengers on an airplane or the, you know, what's going on with your next door neighbor? I mean, I mean, everybody needs to be alert to say, I think this needs to be checked. But uh, I want to give you a little, I, um, I worked at St. Joseph Hospital three and a half years. And uh, we had 10 security officers there. In three and a half years, we never had anything stolen out of a car in our parking lot. And back, this is the 1970s, people were stealing CB radios, I mean like crazy. Then I went to work for five and a half, five and a half years at Trinity Lutheran Hospital, 25 blocks away. And CB radios are being stolen just, you know, we had 15 security officers there. CB radios are being stolen like crazy. People were leaving their car doors unlocked and putting a sign on their on the, the thing. The door is un, unlocked because they didn't want somebody to smash out the window to take their CB radio. Uh, there's a lot of mornings when I came on duty, when I worked the day shift, I came on duty, I just took a clipboard with a whole bunch of report forms and just went out in the parking lot and the people held up their hand and I went over and wrote a report on a stolen CB radio out of their car. Anyway, I was working at uh, Trinity Lutheran Hospital and uh, walking down the hall, the director of security, goddamn fucking lion, son of a bitch. And I, I walked into it, what's wrong? I was just talking to the director of security, of course he said the name, you know, Carter Foss, who was a director of security over at St. Joe Hospital where I had worked for three and a half years. He said, that lying son of a bitch, he said, he just told me that they've never had a CB radio stolen there and people don't steal CB radios. He said, he's a lying motherfucker or whatever. And I said, no. 
and he, well, he, you know, the director, you know, the director he said, "You worked there," he, and I said, "No, we never had a CB radio or anything stolen out of a car because there's one. Actually, there was two, but the parking lot. Well, they were both high enough. I said the parking lot has an extremely high fence all the way around it. There's only one entrance into the parking lot, and on the top of the fence is razor." wire all the way around it. And of course the hospital Trinity had flat parking lots and of course they had a parking garage also but you know no fences. They wanted it to be open and didn't want it to look like a prison or something like that. So those type of things you know um, enter in into it when you're doing you know when when you're doing security. Um, and when I worked in Orlando, Florida, uh, well, when I went to I decided, I went there. I didn't. I retired it, but I went to Orlando, Florida, with my son, and and I got down. And I thought, well, I'll take a job as a contract security guard someplace, sitting in a a lobby and just checking people. And I w went over to this company uh, and walked in and filled out the form. And they said, Oh my gosh. Hospital security, you know, uh, we got. I said no, no, I don't want to do hospital security. I just, I want some, some place sitting in a lobby at a desk, just checking people. No, 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 no. We have this contract. You're going to be in charge of the security at the hospital. We have this contract with them. We need you. You got to do it for us. So I went over there, got out of there as quick as I could, and they had an excuse. We finally moved, and so I said, no, I'm going to work at the hospital. Be in charge of security. You know. They put me at a uh, trucking shipping company where boxes and things come into the place. And they only had security at night when they basically, you got there a little bit early, but then when the people left and there was nobody there, then they had security. In this place, people were coming over a fence all the time, even when these guys that were working, a whole bunch of guys were working there. These, there was thieves who would come over the fence and we're stealing, you know, boxes of cigarettes and anything they could pick up and steal. Anyway, I worked there for months and months and months. And I mean, I knew where they, I could see where they could come over, you know. I, and the mosquitoes, by the way, were there, they were so bad there. It was just, I mean, unbelievable how bad the mosquitoes were. One time when I was there, a supervisor from this contract guard agency came out to check on me. And he came out and he got out and the mosquitoes started attacking me. He said, my God, how can you stand this? And then he eventually, he just took off and ran to his car and he never came back again. So it was not the best working conditions. But I went out there and I positioned myself where I could see the fences and I could see the building. I, and I knew where they were, where they had come over and, and every time that they had stolen. And I, was, I worked a 12-hour shift two days a week, I think it was. Or was that longer? Because I wasn't working. I think, no, I think I was working more days than that. Four, maybe, or something. Anyway, I was there for months and months. Nothing was ever stolen while I was on duty. When I decided to move back, my son and I decided to move back, or not to move back, but to move to Texas. Uh, they sent out, they had me go out there and then meet the guy who was going to be my replacement and I met him out there <coughs> and he pulled up in a pickup truck with a camper shell in the back with a TV antenna on it and a little fridge in it and everything and I told him okay well you know you need to park over here this is a fence you've got to watch and you can park here back in this corner and you can see over this way but this is where they come over no no I'm gonna park up by the front gate and I said, no, you really, and I'm telling you, you know, I'm going to park over by the front. And I said, okay. I left. And, of course, that night, they came over the fence and stole tons of cigarettes and I don't know what all, you know, his first night. So it takes, everybody has got, and you have to, you know, you have to be 100% all the time, one weak link. Because the other side, you know, they're plotting all the time, and the people are, 
I mean, they're as good as, as good as you are at doing your job, whatever your job, you know, is, they're just as good, you know, at doing, I mean, they, because they're, that's what they're thinking about, that's what they're plotting, that's what they're researching, so we've been really lucky, we're, something bad is going to happen, and I, I, now even, you know, the identity card, that's, you know, because it's, I don't, it's not very many Americans who would have an identity card. You know, the threat seems to be from people in other countries, you know, uh, in general. But uh, we need a whole bunch of layers of, def of defense and everybody has to. But the problem is we have so many aircraft in the sky and we have so many people on these aircraft. And when one goes down and then when that happens, the effect that it's going to have on the economy and on transportation and on, you know, people vacationing and just, it's just a tremendous, we need to not get engaged in unnecessary wars and we need to not being, not do what we're doing to our military forces where we're just sending them for repeat, you know, assignments. We need, we need to, conserve the military for so we have that the ability to move those people to move force you know so if, if the if it's Yemen or Somalia wherever Al-Qaeda or whoever these people are that are doing it we need to have the forces to go not invade and start a war but to go into that area and be there and use, you know, whatever force, if Somalia and if uh, some of these countries, if they can't provide security, if they can't keep terrorists from using their nation as a launching point, then, uh, then we'll just have to, we'll just have to play placement. We'll just have to be, you know, we have to use the walk softly and carry a big stick and just try to convince some of these countries, you better get your act together. You know, I mean, if if uh, Somalia and whatever these countries are, if, if you've got terrorists there who are making bombs and trying to put them onto aircraft, then you're not going to be allowed to have any aircraft land or take off you know, from your nation. I mean, just whatever it takes, you know, to do, you know, if we have to go, you know, if we have to go in with military forces for a strike, and then we have to do it. But this thing of, uh, if we've been really lucky, and God bless everybody who, from, you know, everybody from the, transportation checker at a at the door to the president of the United States and to you know to Congress Democrats Republicans everybody and the American people for putting up with security measures and for paying the taxes he's paying the taxes for the security measures but you know we're being really lucky because um, it's just it's a big problem, and I didn't know this was—I was going to be talking about this subject. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching.